is interesting. The media is trying to create George Floyd 2.0, in my opinion. George Floyd 2.0, how are they doing this? Well, there's a young adult by the name of Jalen Walker. And you may have read some of this or heard about it recently, and it happened at the end of June. Basically, Jalen Walker was driving in his car, and I'm gonna read you the headline because that is actually most disgusting, in my opinion, how they framed this headline. And so, Jalen Walker, it says, this is by ABC News, Ted Koppel's old affiliate, <laughs> the Ted Koppel's of the world. They're partially responsible for us heading down a very left-wing direction, very biased media, that is. So basically, here's the headline. The headline reads like this. Black man is unarmed, was unarmed when eight cops opened fire on him. Body camera footage shows. So that's a very loaded headline. Again, black man was unarmed when eight cops opened fire on him. Boom, boom, boom. Body camera footage shows. But if you read this article, there's a lot more to it than this very explosive headline. This headline, I see it as a headline to incite and to incite violence, riotous behavior, etc. because this is what happened during the riots with George Floyd. Let me read this article for you guys. This is actually quite interesting. Um, it's sad, but it's interesting, and we'll get a better idea when we'll take a look at it. So, um, Ohio police officials released officer body camera footage of the 25-year-old black man killed in a hail of bullets fired by eight officers while he was unarmed and running away. So again, that's their narrative at the beginning. Those who have patience will read through the article and see what really happened. As Jalen Walker's family has demanded answers about the circumstances of last week's killing, which authorities have uh, said occurred while following a police chase, Large protests have erupted in Akron, Ohio, with demonstrators marching in the city's police headquarters. On this police headquarters, oh my gosh. Uh, Akron Mayor Dan Horrigan, strange name, but maybe it fits him, and Police Chief Steve Milet, during a news press conference Sunday afternoon, joined the Walker family in calling for peaceful protests and for patience as the investigation continues in the man's death. And he goes on to say here, uh, when an officer makes the most critical decision of his or her life as a police officer, it doesn't matter where in the country this happens. When they make the most critical decision to point their firearm at another human being and pull the trigger, they've got to be ready to explain why they did that and how they did that. Milet, that's the police chief, said he's under obviously a lot of political pressure from the mayor who wants to be reelected. That's what these mayors do. They sell their people down the road. Of course, they point these police chiefs and like sheriffs who can operate independently and truly represent the people. The police chiefs are a bit of a puppet often under the leadership of a woke mayor. So in this particular case, uh, Wyatt is under pressure. He's trying to do the right thing. Milet, excuse me. And he goes on to say, they need to be able to articulate what specific threats they have they were facing, and that goes for every round that goes down the barrel of their gun. Goes on to say, Milet again, the police chief says, uh, he goes on to say, what's up, Leslie? Thank you for joining us. What's up, Julie? Thank you for joining us. Um, Milet goes on to say, da, 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 da. he said he expressed his deepest uh, sympathies for Jalen's family and apologized for their loss. He said, I can't imagine the sense of loss, the pain that they're going through right now. Milet said, I want to personally thank you for the way in which you have been dealing with this situation. You have asked for peace in an environment that is rife for aggression and violence. Kudos to them for doing that. It's not easy to do. I know when you lose a family member, but if you read more about this, you'll see what really happened. If Jalen reflects, he says, the character of this family, which I continually heard that he did, you raised a good son. Okay, now we're growing more sympathetic, empathetic of Jalen Walker, who again, the headline says, was gunned down by eight police officers and he was unarmed and they continued to emphasize that he was a black man. And a man is a man, a woman is a woman. We all should care about life regardless of who the person is or their background is. But by framing it this way, we have instilled and infused bias into the situation. So again, that's why I'm calling this the attempt of the media to create George Floyd 2.0. But as you read more, you'll see that there is no foundation here, at least in my opinion. 
So he goes on to say, the, uh, before the body camera footage was shown, Horrigan, that is the mayor, Mayor Horrigan, <laughs> Um, said he was beyond outraged at the situation and told reporters the video you're about to watch is heartbreaking, etc. and so on. Uh, Akron police officials said that the fatal accident unfolded at 12.30 a.m. June 27th in Akron's North Hill neighborhood when officers attempted to pull over Walker for a traffic violation. Hear this, attempted to pull him over. So something else was going on, guys. They attempted to pull him over for a traffic violation with an equipment violation with his car. Uh, what's up, Joy? Thank you for joining us. Police said the driver allegedly refused to stop. Interesting how they put the word in here, allegedly. There's video footage that shows that he keeps driving, so he actually did refuse to stop. So that's a big no-no right there. And I know they said he was a good boy and stuff earlier, or a good son or what have you. And he may have been a good son. You can maybe be a good son, but still break the law. But in this case, he's breaking the law and not pulling over when the police ask him to pull over. They've got their lights shining. That means pull over. Okay. Police said that the driver allegedly refused to stop setting off a chase that ended in his death. Unfortunately, and I say that unfortunately, and I say it sincerely, but we need to know more about this case before we create George Floyd 2.0 and riots across the country and we ignore them but still go after January 6 protesters in some strange obsession. Uh, so good evening. What's up, Laird? Thank you for joining us. Uh, so let's go on to read about this article regarding the unfortunate uh, death of Jalen Walker. Um, Police officials played footage from the police body camera uh, videos, the first showing police pursuing Walker's silver Buick onto Route 8 in Akron, Ohio. The video showed the Buick taking an on-ramp with a flash of light. Hear this, a flash of light that Milet, Milet is the police chief, Milet said, appeared to be a muzzle flash of a gun coming from the driver's side of the police car. Boom. Okay, someone driving the car... That's Jalen Walker's car, which was him, fired a gun, boom, outside the window as police were following him. Okay, this is extremely important. Wow, Akron is, you're probably hearing about this, Angel. Maybe I'll give you some insight. Maybe you'll give us some insight too. Thank you for sharing that, Angel. Akron, Ohio. Okay, so we're talking about Akron, Ohio, Jalen Walker's unfortunate death, but in this circumstance, looks like he unfortunately made some very bad decisions and put the police under a very difficult, high-pressured situation with very little time to spare. But let's go on to read about this. The video showed again the Buick uh, taking on ramp. There was muzzle flash going out the window. They also re released freeze frames, snap, snap, um, of the flash coming from the vehicle's window. I think that's pretty Pretty convincing. Maybe the the person who wrote this article could have mentioned that in the headline, but they didn't. All they said was, again, black man killed unarmed by eight police officers. Very interesting. I don't like how these insightful uh, mainstream fake news media try to inflame the public to riot and to resist law enforcement. It's not a good standard. Body cam, uh, body camera footage and video recorded officers radioing that they heard at least one shot being fired from Walker's car. The video also shows um, an officer following the Buick off of Route 8 and continuing in pursuit on side streets. And let's see here, the second body camera video recorded officers again, here we go. Uh, at one point, Walker slowed down and jumped out of the car. Hear this, he slows down, he jumps out of the car, the car is still moving. The car is still moving, okay? So the car is driving, he slows down, jumps out, and runs out. He jumps out of the passenger side of the car, okay? He doesn't sound so innocent at this particular point now, does he? Okay. If let's say, let's pretend we're police officers. We have been chasing this guy. We're trying to get him to pull over. He's not pulling over. We see muzzle flash from the car, from the side of the car. We're going, holy smokes, this guy's armed and dangerous, shooting into the public. He's not just maybe shooting at us. He can damage the public. He can hurt the community, people in the community. And we don't know what to do. So they're very nervous. They're probably ready with their firearms because their role is not just to protect themselves. It's also to protect you and me 
and the entire community. It's much bigger than just you or me chasing somebody because they have offended us. It's them protecting the community. So we have to put this in the proper framing. I probably should read more about this before I explain more about that part of it. Uh, at one point, Walker slowed down, jumped out of the vehicle while it was driving. <laughs> while it was driving. And the footage showed a man who police said was Walker exiting the car at passenger side while wearing, hear this, a ski mask. He put a ski mask on. Okay, so now we've got some really, really um, provocative things going on here. So we have uh, Jalen Walker, who we were told was a good son, who we told was gunned down by eight police officers and he was unarmed. Um, uh, Angel has a comment. She says, what the hell do these people expect, <laughs> expect our law enforcement to do? This is, <laughs> there's absolutely no common sense left in this world. You are 100% right. And that's the problem here. Common sense isn't common practice anymore. And there is a very clear message to gain from this. And we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. And hopefully, God willing, some people, of course, those who are um, uh, spiritually minded people, who believe in God and believe in right and wrong and the golden rule and what have you, will apply this evenly and fairly and squarely. But those who would like to make excuses or to inflame in the communities are going, meaning like the politicians, the political leaders and what have you, they are going to try to blame other people for this event, which is a total lie in my opinion. Again, at one point he jumps out of the vehicle while it's driving wearing a ski mask. What's up, Deborah? Thank you for joining us. Um, multiple officers are then seen in the video running after Walker who appeared to look over his shoulders as officers fired their weapons at him. So this is where it gets, where they're trying to hold the officers accountable. They shot, uh, Jalen in this particular case, they killed him. He died. Um, unfortunately, and I say that unfortunately, sincerely, right? It is, it's apparently he was married. He's someone's husband. He's someone's son, and, uh, you know, what have you. So it's, it's, it's very sad, but he made a series of very bad decisions here, which led to this confrontation and led to the officers having to make life or death situations to not only protect themselves, but also protect the community. Uh, Laird, Eric Wells of Glen Carn. Uh, did you hear about this one? Akron is becoming Youngstown now. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Um, Eric says, uh, the convoluted race-based narrative has exploited the xenophobic gulf between the urban youths and mainstream Americans. Let me see if I can open up this comment more. It's a good, uh, I like the thinking. I like that we're thinking, guys. That's what we need to be doing. We need to be, we need to be critical thinkers. And that's what the left doesn't want us to be. Uh, so Eric is aware of this. And he had some more that he said. Um, that kid was pretty much trained to maintain the supposed uh, enmity between themselves and the mainstream, especially law enforcement. It's an elaborate deflection to obscure the real threats to them, which is each other. That's a great point, um, Laird. Very great point. Um, there is... A lot of violence, unfortunately, in the inner cities going on right now. And there, unfortunately, is so much deflection going on that the left is using for political gain to get more votes and what have you, saying it's because of some massive racist uh, agenda to hurt people in the inner city. That is an absolute lie. And Joe Biden is saying that and trying to build that up as a fake narrative should in itself get him impeached in a real world that has honesty and truth as its main value. But Joe Biden, of course, lives in a world that is defined by his, his handlers. He is a puppet. So let's go on to read some more about this article. Uh, despite the shooting occurrence seven days ago, Milet said none of the officers have been interviewed by investigators. Uh, there is a, let's say here, there is a attorney I want to talk about. Uh, okay, following the news conference, Bobby DiCello, an attorney for Walker's family, said the key fact of the case, he sounds like he's a mafia attorney, uh, key, the key fact of the case, he says, is which Milan confirmed is that Walker was unarmed when he was killed. Okay, so that's what they're trying to focus on, that he was unarmed when he was shot, okay? Uh, Milet uh, said that the video had confirmed that Walker was unarmed when he was shot. Uh, 
Uh, he said the footage also captured a handgun with a separate loaded magazine. So he did have a weapon in the car. He had a handgun in the car and it was found. There also was a wedding ring, unfortunately. And this is, again, a reflection that this is a person who probably was married and made some very bad decisions. And again, it's, it's sad. But the police officers were put in a very difficult situation to not only protect themselves, but especially to protect everyone in the community and if they don't do that they're derelict of their duties and that's what they need to do and so this guy's shooting his gun outside of the window as he's driving okay as if you're an, and when you're an officer you're seeing that you're going to assume if he jumps out that he is armed I would assume that. I assume most of you would assume that. I would assume that most of the public even Maybe some of Jalen's family members, if they didn't know it was him running, they would assume that he was armed if a guy was shooting outside of a window if they were a police officer. That is a normal response. Officers jump out. The guy had been shooting, jumps out with a ski mask on, vehicle still moving. He starts running. They're like, oh, no, he's going to go take a hostage somewhere. He's going to go shoot somebody, rob someone else. Did he commit a murder somewhere? And they saw him as armed and dangerous. That sums it up right there. It is sad. It's unfortunate. But he was armed and dangerous. He could have injured somebody in the high or in the chase. I don't know if it was high speed or not. He could have injured somebody shooting his firearm outside the window in a reckless manner. He could have injured somebody, causing several police to have to uh, probably, you know, break the uh, the speed limit laws and what have you to try to, uh, you know gather this guy and try to capture him. And so this guy was provoking a very dangerous situation. The officer's response, it's understandable. It's unfortunate. But you know what? What are you supposed to assume? If he had a gun on his, on his seat, what are you supposed to assume? The guy was armed and dangerous. But what is his attorney saying? Bobby DiCello, again, Sounds like an ambulance chaser, right? So what do they say in the old days, the ambulance chasers? They would chase the ambulances around and say, oh, you got insured. Oh, let me let me go ahead and you know, let me get, get you on a lawsuit and we can try and sue the person who actually uh, made the light that didn't turn on at the right time for you to go at the, uh, at the uh, stop sign or what have you, whatever. The point is, this guy's an ambulance chaser. Bobby DiCello, and he's trying to make an excuse and make millions and also defame our police departments. And there's a problem when you do that. I'm going to read a little bit more about this, the body camera footage. Again, uh, videos were released in accordance with the city law passed last year requiring body camera footage uh, be made public seven days after an officer's use of force resulted in death or great bodily injury. Again, DiCello, <laughs> the attorney, said that videos show that Walker did not pose a threat, <laughs> yeah, right, uh, to, uh, to the officers when they fired more than 60 shots. Okay, so what is he saying? They did, he didn't pose a threat then, but he posed a threat when he was driving around pointing his gun out the window. That's a fact. That's just a fact. They didn't know that he wasn't armed. He could have turned around and shot them as quick as can be, and they would have been uh, dead, right, injured or dead. You can see his hands. He is running in the video, he says. DiCello again says, told ABC News, Good Morning America. Of course, they gobbled it up because they love to get the riots going, don't they? After watching the video before it was made public, he said the first two Akron police officers to engage Walker deployed their stun guns. Okay. Okay, interesting. Milet, that is the chief of police, uh, confirmed that the officers did deploy tasers. They used, uh, they tried to use the tasers, but they had no effect. Okay, well, this is another example where the police tried to escalate gradually. So they showed restraint. And being that the guy revealed that he did have a firearm earlier, for them to assume that he didn't have a firearm then is to um, potentially put themselves and also the public and uh, harm's way. Uh, why do you, uh, again, he goes on to say, why do eight men shoot him mostly from behind? What are they supposed to stand in front of him and shoot at each other? I mean, this is ridiculous. This is so ridiculous. So absurd. This is what the left will do. 
right? They'll try to ask a zillion questions and why we don't have a perfect situation on planet Earth. Well, people make mistakes. People are sinners. People do all sorts of stupid stuff. And when we tell them to not be held accountable, we're just continuing to kick the can down the road. And you're going to pass it on from generation to generation to generation. Does Mr. You know, Walker, Jalen Walker, does he have kids? Are we going to tell his kids it's okay to behave this way? I mean, this is ridiculous. So it goes on to say, I mean, they make more excuses. DeCello again. DeCello says... We saw no evidence in the video that uh, when we reviewed uh, of Walker posing a threat to the officers, that's another lie. Shooting a gun out the window is a threat. Just sprinting away from these men, he was shot as he starts to turn. They make it sound like he's going for a run in the neighborhood. Not true. Okay, again, as he looks over his shoulder, uh, Walker's aunt, uh, Lawana, Lajana Lawana Dawkins told GMA, we like to know why he was shot down like a dog. He was not shot down like a dog. Unfortunately, he was breaking the law under at least three circumstances. He broke the law, at least three, maybe four. Uh, again, DiCello, the uh, attorney, the ambulance chaser, said Sunday that Walker had uh, was saddened over the recent death of his girlfriend. Now we're supposed to feel more sorry for him, which we do. I, I feel sorry for his family, right? I do, but come on. Right? right is right, wrong is wrong. He shouldn't have used you know, a deadly tool out his window. No way. You can't do that, being chased by police. So again, he was uh, saddened over the recent death of his girlfriend, but relatives told him, uh, uh, told him they did not notice anything about his behavior that would have led to him, uh, to him and his alleged police chase uh, and his uh, being shot by the officers. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Again, trying to make more excuses for criminals. And why is this a problem? Well, this is a problem because you have things like what's going on in my hometown in San Jose here. And so I'm going to go ahead and pull this article up. This is actually San Jose, California. And a friend of mine just sent, the, sent me this earlier today. And it's entitled um, by Cron, K-R-O-N, uh, for News. And um, <laughs> that's pretty funny. So basically, let me pull this up right here. Uh, da, 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 da. Jail's revolving door. Ah, oh, it's not available in my country. Okay, well, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> I can't cover that article because according to my VPN, I'm in a different country. So we will cover a different article. <laughs> so sorry about that, guys. That's what you get with ExpressVPN. But, um, but it protects me from other things. Uh, and so and. Anyway, so let's go to the next article.